What's up team? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be working on a 350Z that I've recently acquired uh, through a bit of a bit of a deal. Um, we've got a dimp puller, we've got our polisher. We're going to give this thing a tidy up. But first, I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. So, we had a, I think it was a 2003 Discovery 2, which I actually bought because we've had a bit of a weird Tetris thing happening with our cars at the moment. So, we tow with a... Um, with a Discovery 4, which is also our family's daily. So obviously we've got two kids, baby seats. It's a seven seater, we can fit the dog in the back um, and it can tow the car trailer. I don't know if you can see it in the, in the camera uh, really well. It's super comfortable, right? But it's starting to get a few more Ks on it. It's got like 240 something thousand on it. Um, and it's all good and runs really well, whatever, but I'm just mindful of the fact that, you know, it's a Land Rover and electronics and whatever. As time goes on, it's probably more chance that something cool will happen to it. So I've been thinking about uh, getting rid of it and sort of maybe changing things, up, changing things up with our daily and tow cars and whatever. So the story goes on. We found this Discovery 2. A mate of mine told me about it. Went and checked it out. We bought it. Um, it was really, really tight. It was black. It was a V8, which was pretty cool. Completely standard. It hadn't been off-road. So I was thinking, oh, yeah, we'll chuck a lift kit in it, make it look like a bit of a rig. I'll keep it as a tow car, so the big car, so you can still put the dog in the back and whatever. And then we'll downsize the family car and buy what I really want is actually an F80 M3. So uh, that hasn't happened yet. Still, it's still just chipping away at a few different things, but um, the Discovery sort of just sat here on the driveway. Uh, and in the meantime, you guys will see in another video, but we actually ended up with a Honda S2000. The S2000, we sort of had our fun with it, put it up for sale, and we did a deal where we ended up swapping it for a Land Rover Defender. Now the Defender is like, it is it's sick. It's like fully kitted out. It's an absolute tank. It could survive the zombie apocalypse. We jump in the Defender and we bugger off up the beach and be left alone forever. Um, it's an absolute weapon. So the Defender's looking like it's going to be the tow car and the vehicle that I use when we have to put the dog in the back or if we want to go camping, which, you know, it's becoming more and more a part of my life. I really want to get out of the city. Um, and that means we can still buy the M3 or whatever, or the smaller car and have the small daily around town. So the black discovery that we originally had for the tow vehicle sort of became null and void. Uh, so we backed it up for sale. Anyway, dude rocks up at my house in a 350Z and I'm like, hmm, wonder what we can do here. Hey man, what do you, you know, he wants to buy the car, the, the discovery. What are you doing with the Z? You want to do a deal? So we end up doing a deal and that's how we end up with this. So this car is definitely going to get sold, um, but there's a few little things I want to sort of just tidy up on it before we sort of get to that point. It's got a little bit of a scrape up the side here and it's got a dent in it, which actually happened the day that he was coming to see my car. Um, he like went over like, well, went around an island or something and hit like a bit of a pole. You guys will see in a sec. Um, there's an issue with the aircon where it doesn't work all the time. It's sort of intermittent. The passenger side door handle doesn't open from the outside and it just needs a bit of a clean up. But the good thing about it is it's got like 170,000 Ks, it's got two keys, it's got log books. It, I think it was a one owner car before him, so I'm guessing I'm, well, I'll be the third owner. Um, and it's actually, in generally, really, really good condition. It's got a brand new clutch, a new flywheel, drives really, really good. It's um, actually super impressive. I've never driven a 350Z before. Super talky, by the way. Um, and yeah, so today we're going to be tidying this thing up. And if I get a chance, I'll give you guys a good look at the Defender, but I might save that for another video because it's definitely worth its own video. Um, so yeah, let's get to work on this thing. Yeah. This is the Z. Like I said, it's actually in, in really good nick. It's a 2006, uh, so it's a rev up motor, six speed. And aside from that mark on the side, the body's in, I'd say it's in very good condition. There's a few little marks in the paint that I've just started to notice. But really outside of that, it's, uh, it's really, really tidy. So, if we can get this thing sorted, oh, you can sort of see the dip a bit better there, down the bottom. I reckon we're on a winner here. Let's uh, let's set this camera up and we'll try and get some, get this dent out, I reckon. So I've never actually used these dent pullers before. I've used like little glue guns and pulled stuff out. But I'm guessing, we don't want one that's too small, but not one that's too big either. And I don't really know which way to go about it, but, looking at the dent it's right there looks to be about the same size this is 
So I reckon we're just going to wing it. Probably have to moisten this a little bit. Let's get some water. Let's create some suction. should help create a bit of a suction there. It's not even sealing on it, actually. It might be, uh, be no good because it's on a small surface, but if, because it's on an uneven surface, sorry, but if this doesn't work, then I will Google it. But I like trying things first. All right, that's better. That's where we want it to sit. I don't know if you guys will be able to see there. That's the dent itself. But I don't know how to... This might be a time for Googling how to use a dent puller properly. I had a bit of a read on the internet and I think that the metal is actually stretched. So it's gonna be pretty difficult for me without like heating it up and whatever, um, sort of manipulating it a bit more to actually get it back to 100%. But I think that it's actually better than it was. I think, who knows, I'm pretty optimistic. So yeah, anyway, let's, um, well, I know we can definitely attack and we'll get other results or we won't is this scratch. So got the big scrape there. There's some marks down the side here. It's actually pretty bad when I look at it. Um, so, I've got the polisher here. I'm gonna set it up and then we'll give this thing a go. In the interest of uh, speed and finding out whether I can actually get this paint off or if it's actually gone into it, I'm, um, I'm not gonna clay bar the car or anything like that. I'm just gonna zip over it. But generally, you should wash the car, clay bar it before you uh, re remove the contaminants from the paint before you try and polish it. But let's just find out. Otherwise, Gonna need paint. For a quick polish, you know, it's obviously not gonna be perfect, but uh, we'll definitely be able to save most of this paint. So I'm gonna get to that now. Have a go at this. Obviously it's not perfect, it's far from perfect, but it's a hell of a lot better than it was. And I would go as far as to say, oh, this is my super clean mic fiber. I would go as far as to say that it's totally presentable for someone who's not looking for a show car, but just something that they can be proud of. Um, so I'm going to give that a big thumbs up. So I've had a quick look and I think these are held on with double sided tape. I'm a bit reluctant to pull these off because if there's tape residue underneath it, I'm going to have to get the tape off somehow and by using like the goo off stuff that I use, it might melt through the plastic. So I'm just going to try and polish these up as best I can. And in the grand scheme of things, I don't think it's going to add or subtract uh, too much value from the car anyway. People are used to seeing these with these uh, with these headlight covers in the car. Like I said, it's not perfect, but it'll be something that's tidy and whatever. Someone can make it their own. So let's get to polishing these. I don't have any sandpaper here because I'm not at the shed, but let's see what the, um, the orbital can do. This polish is actually broken. Uh, the motor speed's damaged in it, but my other one's down at the shed. Um, I think that there's actually a bit of bat poo that's eaten its way through it, but I can tell you already that that is a million times better than what it was. Clear, and you can compare it to this one, because it's actually in the sunlight. <laughs> Much better. Ducks all around and, then you have and after. The next issue that I'm facing is the air conditioning in this car. Uh, I'll show you guys. So even with this on, I can hear the air clicking 
but it's not blowing. So I think that is the uh, the blower motor. And apparently there's a blower relay, which is actually behind the fuse panel where the normal fuses go. There's also something behind here, but the clutch is engaging, it's just not blowing. So that's giving me faith that there is actually, it's a relay issue. So I think I'm gonna to get to work pulling this apart and hopefully I can get behind it when there's these two blue relays. It's one of those two. Uh, but it's gonna be a bit of a mission because there's not much space there. So let's see. So it's a little bit dark in here, but what I'm led to believe is that behind the fuse panel, which is the fuse panel that you know, every car has in the footwell. There's two relays. So we're gonna undo some 10 mil bolts here and we should be able to get access to the relays and I'll get some lighting on there and we'll see what we can work out. So there's two 10 mil bolts up the top, one 10 mil down the bottom and I've got access to behind the fuse panel. There's two relays in there, one closest to the door, apparently is the one for the heater and there's another identical one next to it. What I'm gonna do to test if this is the problem is switch the one behind it to the one here. The other one's apparently responsible for like the gauge lighting and stuff like that. So I'm not too bothered by that right now, but at least then we'll know whether this is the culprit or not. And we can go and buy a new relay. So I'm gonna switch these over and then I'll film uh, and actually test it out. So I've switched the relays over. Um, let's see now, I'll start it so it's legit. Let's see if this works. go. We have cold air conditioning. That's fantastic. And it's cold. Sweet. Well, now we know that we need to go buy a relay and then uh, we can put that all back together. And that's another job out of the way. Hey, bro. I'm in, I'm in the set. Red. Yeah. Oh, I'm making a video. Yeah. 